Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, I wanted to explain again the global financial system, why this economic collapse never comes, uh, just some things about the financial system to share that, for those that don't know, are completely mind-boggling, exposes basically the whole world up to the fraud that it is. I have done this before, and I would say about a third of you have been over this with me over the years. But please understand, there is, uh, I don't know, there's several thousand new people here that need to understand this. And although I won't be right about a portion of it, I, I think this hits pretty close to the mark as to what's going on. And some of this, you won't find this too many places, and you certainly won't find it on all these financial collapse channels and people that bring on these uh, experts uh, that just for years and years said we were just a month away from economic collapse. So I just want to talk about a few of these things, and I'm sorry for the third of you that have been over this and, and know this inside and out, but it is very revealing. It needs to be known by anybody that's new. And you could show this to someone uh, that, you know, we always want to bring in our friends and family into some of the things that we investigate and you could show them this video and you could basically tell them to them if you go out like sit somebody down in front of this video and tell that person if you go out after doing so much research and confirm that what this guy is saying about the basics of the financial system um, not even the conspiracy side is true and you've never been told these things then the world simply doesn't exist as they told you it did. And if we didn't know 99% of how this financial system works, then isn't it logical to assume we've been lied about almost everything? So you could use this video, I think, as well if you want to do that with anybody uh, close to you. I think I'll try to do videos like that in the future as well. So all this talk for uh, ever and ever about global financial collapse. And the first thing I like to point out is if the system was real, if it's what my economics professor at Penn State told me it was, or my finance professor or high school told me it was, it would have collapsed a long time ago. Okay. It is only because what maybe used to be somewhat of a real system has been replaced by a faux system, a fake system, a digital system, zeros and ones, something that can be run via some sort of uh, supercomputer or manipulated globally, constantly propped up so it keeps going. So when I say this, if the system was real or what we told what this financial system is, that it's just supply and demand. It's consumers need to buy trucks and need to buy new cars and need to buy new clothes and that creates demand and demand for stocks and a good economy. People want to go out and buy stocks and see when a stock price is set. It's how many bidders on the stock versus how many want to sell. If there aren't a lot of sellers and a lot of people want Apple stock, then the price rises. It's all supply and demand. It's all very natural. That all went out the door a long, long time ago, in my opinion. In my opinion, there is no natural supply and demand. Of course not in the stock market. I mean, that's to me, is completely fake. It is literally like a video game running, in my opinion, that they can do anything with it that they want. Uh, and I believe most of the economy is like that also. Now, the reason they can do that is simply just it all points back to the Fed and... The, if the Fed, I'll explain a little bit uh, more for, for any of the newbies about what, what the Fed is, but when you have an entity that can create, and I've done this many times over the years, when you can create $100 billion in 10 seconds, or what, anything, or $5 trillion in 10 seconds by typing and hitting enter, and that money is distributed to different parts of the economy to prop up certain things, to certain central banks, to, to, to regular banks, like uh, regular banks, right? Yeah, like Citibank and JP Morgan's a regular bank. But even your local bank, when you can create any amount of money, and it, it just, then you, then you have the ability to do anything you want regarding uh, economies. The only, the only threat you have is inflation. That's all they worry about. 
is inflation. And we are led to believe that uh, countries are independent, all looking out for their own interests. This, this, at least, there are no country borders anymore financially, or it would have imploded a long time ago. Meaning in the U.S. we have the Fed, the, the central bank. It's obviously not in any way part of the government. It's just a collection of private banks. I'll talk about that in, in a moment. I'm, for now I'm talking about why this system keeps perpetuating itself and nothing ever collapses. In Europe there is the European Central Bank and they can just print up euros and prop up whatever industry they want and flood the system with euros. And in Japan, the Japanese, the Bank of Japan, see all of these banks, these central banks that just create money at, on a keyboard, literally. Um, they're all been working with each other for a long, long time. They have to be perfectly coordinated. I believe it's being done via some AI supercomputer that knows exactly where to inject money when, knows where to pull it back, knows where to go forward. But all the central banks, even China, um, well, China's that rogue nation and they do, they're, they're uh, mysterious, they do everything on their own. No, they're all playing ball together. Uh, if if one, they're all bailing the water out together. If one of the bailers of water in the leaking canoe, um, you know, were to stop, the whole thing would go under. So it's global coordination and global money printing. Now there's two aspects, in my opinion, of money printing. The money printing and made up money that they tell us about via these ridiculous programs four or five years ago called quantitative easing where the Fed just printed 80 billion a month and sent that throughout the economy to provide stimulus. Did you ever see any part of that 80 billion a month printed on a keyboard? I never saw any part of it. wonder where it went. Well, we have some ideas. Well, they said they were bringing that program to an end <laughs> and then everything just continued and they actually said it got better. Well, nothing ever ended. In my opinion, they, they print up billions and billions uh, a month and it, all over the world and inject it wherever they need to to keep things stable. In my opinion, these monetary injections that are going on, um, that's completely off the books. Why would they have to tell you? Why would they tell us? Why would they think we, we were being told? The Fed itself, we know, is a it's a, some sort of collection of private bankers and we're told... Uh, basically, the slaves are told this, so they um, it's just told over and over to us, so we don't question it too much. We All of our lives, we've heard that the Fed is just a collection of private bankers and private banks, and the U.S. Congress can't audit it. Your public officials, even if some of those public officials are real and not just complete puppets of the system itself, which is what we know they are, even you know a few real people are probably going to get into the House of Representatives, where I've talked about before, once they get in there, they can't do anything. They're powerless among 500 other votes. But even even those people that want to do, they would have no authority to ever audit the Fed. We know that. So we've been told that over and over again our whole lives, so we don't really question it much at this point. Well, it's always been that way, and I guess you know they've beaten it into our subconscious that it just kind of makes sense that nobody knows what this entity, the Fed, is that creates all money for the United States and the world. Makes sense why that wouldn't be available to the public in a free country. So obviously that doesn't make sense if you stop to think about it for just two seconds, but that's the that's the message they've propagated and we've heard so many times, or people have, we don't question it. We question it, but the people around us don't. We're obviously a fraction of a fraction of a fraction, people that actually think in this country versus everybody else. Um, very, very small percentage. <clears throat> so the central bank coordination is such and the money is injected and one of the proofs of that is nothing ever seems to fail anymore doesn't it now they keep up this ruse somebody right now is saying well Matt the, the, the uh, economy is like doing so well and uh, unemployment just hovers around all time lows year after year after year you can fake statistics any way you want um, and things are doing okay because you, that when you're injecting billions all over the place, you pull these billions back that are, isn't being injected like steroids in the, those bodybuilders that I showed you a few videos back, the whole thing not only would deflate and go back to normal, it would implode upon itself because at this point it's a gigantic Ponzi scheme. <clears throat> so um, 
in terms of the the best analogy for what the economy is at this point and I've like I've used this in the past but it's very good it's it's a train that's running down the side of a mountain runaway train but the mountain is endless it's building up more and more momentum and you kind of you know eventually it's going to crash right well it has to crash by any definition it has to crash that's the economy but you you lean out of the train and in front of the train you're, you're like where's my track going to run out there are these master craftsmen at the speed of your train laying more track all they try to do is just lay more track in front of the runaway train <clears throat> because of the, the nature of the system uh, no dollar can be created no money can be created without a debt instrument and this can get kind of complicated but they're always if there's a new dollar in the system there always has to be a debt instrument attached to it so they just have to all they do is produce more and more debt this relates back to the Ponzi scheme itself of the system why the national debt must go up the national debt I don't even I haven't looked I don't watch the news it was p passing 20 trillion I don't know the national debt must go up all the time now they might show you a quarter or two where it didn't and uh, that just to show you they're trying to manage it no it must by definition go up and up and up <clears throat> because that creation of more debt is essentially the analogy of laying more track in front of the runaway train that gets faster and faster and faster so as the national debt pushes up past 20 trillion the amount of debt everything starts to exponentially you know uh, implode upon itself that, that you'll find probably in <clears throat> six or seven years the national debt will have jumped up to 40 trillion where it took you know 35 years to get to 20 trillion it might take just three years to get to 40 trillion <clears throat> so it will increase and that is the nature of the system. Their the reason that their their god of Wall Street and of all economy is growth. And it's not just um, it's just something we when we watch CNBC. Oh, everybody wants growth, 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 growth. And there's more to it. Meaning we hear that Apple last quarter made uh, five billion dollars revenue, so, which is a which is profit on Wall Street. They net re revenue. And then this quarter they made five billion. They made five billion. That's pretty good, right? And then the stock falls twelve, fifteen percent. What? Because there was no growth. There was no. Even though they made five billion, there was the growth stopped. So Wall Street will take them down. Will punish them ten, fifteen percent. That's assuming, again, it's even real. And there are real sellers. There are some real sellers, but that it's manipulated. But I, I don't know if I'm going to get into that, if I can. But the point is, as soon as something doesn't grow. Uh, from a Wall Street perspective, they say, oh, it's it's dying, even though they just made another $5 billion. The point of that is that the whole system must grow. Uh, to, the, the, that track has to be laid, or the entire system will implode upon itself. When uh, the, whole, the, the lifeblood of the system is debt, there always has to be more debt instruments to introduce new dollars into the system. One of the main reasons for that is when a loan is taken out, the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for your mortgage is created um, people this is also mind-blowing I should have said this earlier the bank hands you your cashier's check for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the closing of your home the bank made that money up just made it up out of nothing um, a few minutes maybe an hour before they gave it to you what do you mean they made it up? It was it came from other depositors. They have depositors, and you got a percentage of the deposit. Nope, um, roughly ten percent might have come from depositors. Ninety percent they just made up. They brought the money into existence from nothing. It did not exist one minute. Next minute, here you go. You use it to buy a house. But what's what's just the most diabolical thing in the world is you then owe the two hundred fifty thousand dollars back to the bank that's built on the back of your sweat and labor and your employment and your occupation so they give you fake money over 30 years of indentured servitude you give the two hundred fifty thousand dollars of principal back based on your real labor so it's kind of like real money coming back something had to be bought something had to be sold you had to dig a ditch but you have to pay interest on the money so let me get this straight the bank makes up the money 
that they didn't have on a keyboard in 10 seconds, they give you, nobody lifted a finger other than, oh, this is pretty tough to type, I guess. They give you the 250. You have to pay it back, and then you owe them interest for such a, the altruistic deed that they did for you by giving you the 250. You have to pay interest back. But you've all heard this before, some haven't, that the the amount of interest that is calculated on your mortgage amortization table, whatever they call it, over the life of a loan, you might owe $75,000 of interest. I know it's lower today, but in the old days when interest rates were normal, you'd owe 80, 90,000 of interest over 30 years, sometimes over 100,000. The interest does not exist in the system itself the moment the bank hands you that cashier's check so you can go to your closing. The interest doesn't exist, meaning um, if everything just froze and you had to pay back the interest, there's no, not only do you not have the money, there's no money even in the system for the interest. So the interest, it's that same example of the train is running down the hill, runaway train, more and more momentum, economy is getting larger and larger. The debt instruments, like which is the, the analogy of laying the track in front of the runaway train, has to get larger and larger. In a bigger sense, the track has to be in front of the train, if you see what I'm saying. So laying track would be like creating more bogus debt instruments, more monetary injections, more quantitative easing, more buying up mortgages and bad bonds and just crap to flood the system with debt. Now, you know, one, back to how long can they keep this up? I, I've gone back to what I've said many times over the years. We know if, it, if everything was real, that it would have imploded a long time ago. And I, and I mean like regular just buyers and sellers in supply and demand. Frank, I'm assuming that even includes fractional reserve banking, the ability to just lend, create money out of nothing for loans has always existed. Even with that, it would have collapsed 1929 depression style a long time ago. So I've said, the only smart answer is, if they've pulled it off this long, we can only assume they'll be able to pull it off a lot longer than we think uh, or that we expect. You know, I predicted right about this time, there's no, right about this time, there's just no way they could keep it going. But, again, uh, it's inevitable it cannot keep going. That's what this cryptocurrency is, is, is all about. I'll talk about that in a moment, in my opinion, with this. Bitcoin is an introduction to cryptocurrency. I'll talk about that. But it can't, it cannot go on forever. Um, because if the debt instruments are needed, the laying of the track to keep the train which must move faster and faster and faster. You can't level that train off. Once, If growth dies, worldwide growth dies, that means the debt instruments aren't being produced, they don't need to be produced, or growth dies. The whole system implodes because the just the ability to pay back interest means the system must become larger so you can get your hands on the interest that needs to, to, need to pay back. It would all go under very, very quickly. And again, if they show us a quarter or two of growth at some point, I I don't care. Like that little stunt that was pulled back in the Clinton era, um, we were during the dot com boom. Um, people actually, the, the people that actually believe politics is real, will come out and actually. I've heard people, my family member, have said, "Well, Bill Clinton um, got rid of the national debt." Uh, remember that during the '90s. Well, I mean, the, first of all what happened was nothing but they they don't even have it right they talk about him paying back the debt and managing the the national debt or all that happened was there was no existing debt no deficit for two or three quarters no new debt he didn't pay back a chunk of the national debt it can never be paid back or the whole system would implode so they don't even have that right but they think bill clinton and even if even if that was right you could put I could take off an old, my old shoe right now and put it on a podium and call it the President of the United States. And during a revolutionary time uh, in a global economy, a one in a hundred year cycle, which was the dot com boom and the dot com mania that Bill Clinton presided over, I could put a shoe on a podium and show two or three quarters 
of no deficit no, because revenues, government revenues were so high from all that dot-com madness. Bill Clinton didn't do anything but try to jerk himself off under the table. What did he do? And people assigned that to Bill Clinton. That's how stupid and gone people are. But, I mean, he, whatever. Let me just move on. I mean, if you see, if you think Bill Clinton was responsible, you you not only don't even see the first level of deception or fakery, there, you're being fooled on five different levels. That's how gone people are. Anyway, so... um. What, did, what was I saying about the, the you you get a you get the mortgage and the, the interest doesn't even exist. So the whole the main point is the national debt uh, can never ever uh, be paid back. Um, even if they made an attempt to say, oh gosh, twenty one trillion, we need to get that back to a really reasonable number, like twenty trillion. Even an attempt to take it back, there would be it's just musical chairs. And it wouldn't be when the music stopped. There wouldn't be one person left without a chair. There'd be tens of millions of people left without a chair. It would be a domino effect and go right into a 1929 depression, which then they would have to just create all this money and stimulus. And they're saying, well, what? we're basically in it now, and they just create as much as they want. Now, uh, getting back to one of the things I was saying earlier, one of the reasons we know this is happening is because nothing ever fails. Um, think about it. When was the last time... Uh, anything failed. Oh, are you going to tell me about, you know, Kmart and um, Kmart and Sears? Really? Is that really that significant? I mean, um, Payless Shoe Source closed four, three hundred or four hundred stores because online. I mean, th- there's nothing material has happened. Ford still exists. Toyota still exists. General Electric. All the major companies still. Nothing ever happens to them. In my opinion, there's likely, and I've said this before, there have been likely several, several, or many, many times where these companies were going to fail, or something could be a gigantic ripple could be placed in the economy, like a a crisis at General Electric, and um, the General Electric stock then would drop, and then that would create worry and panic, and it could, you know, there's still, it's not... 100% 100% fake. There's still a lot of Americans and people around the world with money. Their money is invested. If they all withdrew and fled for the exits, exits at the same time, it, you know that that would create a major problem. So it's almost like they can't even afford a major league bad news story. They can't afford to even have the chance of starting that domino line of panic. So. There's never been a crisis. Think about think through the last ten years since we came out of this, whatever happened in two thousand seven, two thousand and eight. There's never been a crisis, a financial crisis in any major company that you know of. There hasn't been. Uh, it just you know, at least in the dot com era, all these dot coms, you know, after all the investment they got, they didn't turn a profit. They went belly up. Of course, Amazon just you know year after year, no profit, no profit, just. Just growth, but growth, but no profit. Growth, but no profit. Stock up and up and up. Because Amazon, to my opinion, was a chosen one. It's a, it's chosen, and supported by the system itself. It would have never been allowed to fail. So I think they think that. Um, uh, well, here's what happens, in my opinion. Let's just say, uh, and I've said this before, but let's say there was a Ford Motor Company. The directors go, we can't pay our bills this month for whatever reason. Think all these companies just made. The exact right decisions, and there hasn't, shouldn't have been a crisis in any major company. I'm saying there have been a lot of crises, but we never know about it, in my opinion. So Ford Motor Company goes, and I'm just, I'm not, I don't know anything about Ford. This is an example. I don't know anything about Ford. Could happen to any company. Say, oh, we can't pay our bills. Well, I think, I think they're told to immediately communicate, get on the red bat phone with the Fed. And I've said this before. The Fed says, well. Well, when are you going to come out of it? Oh, we think we can come out of it in three quarters. What do you need to get you by? We need $1.5 billion. Okay. Let me just hit send. Fed. Go- I mean, literally, this is what I think happens. $1.5 billion to Ford, at Ford. Send. Goes over. Ford opens their bank account. $1.5 billion in the account. Now, that's to me that has happened many times. 
it's off books. You'll never know about it. It won't be reported on CNBC. Um, they just can't afford, if we woke up um, one day and Ford Motor Company was failing, then it could send a, a major, it could start a domino line. So they just make sure that something like that never happens, in my opinion. But since everything is digital, everything's zeros and ones, well, why wouldn't they? These, all these major companies have, if there's, if there's a table in the back room where the masters of the universe meet, they all, they all have a seat, if not right at the table, with Google and Amazon and uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and City, not City. City's a couple rows back. You know, there, um, you know, some companies like Ford Motor Company would be a couple rows back. They're in the room with the table, but they're not, they're not at the table with their arms hanging over the table like Google, you know, pounding on the table like. The, the Google's at the is the front row, um, so you know they all they're all going to protect each other, and why would the Fed itself, if the Fed's a collection of private banks, they have all this investment in say the company we're picking on here, Ford, they wouldn't want it to go belly up. They just send it what it needs. So because the Fed has the ability to do that, you wonder, you know, when any company went under. Uh, it's likely, and I don't know how long this is going on, but you could say that company did not have a seat at the table. If it did, it would simply be bailed out, and why would anybody know about it? The only fear in doing that is inflation. The only downside they have is inflation. Yeah, by textbook definition, if you just print up and throw all these billions all over the world, then you and I that hold our billions, <laughs> whatever little we hold under the mattress, becomes low, is worth less and less and less. And we have seen the inflationary effect in things that are very important in life, like uh, a new roof on your house or a plumber or you know, getting a, a, crude, a, a home heating oil delivery, things, things that are important, a, a root canal if you don't have dental insurance, I mean, oh, a thousand bucks. In terms of the bullshit in life that we don't need, um, I just was in Target the other day, and the TV's... 36 inches and lower are like $240. I mean, tiny little flat screens, 4K. The bullshit, I think that that's another, I'm not even going to get into why I think TV prices are so low. That's another conversation with a conspiracy level that's too high for many people watching. But um, the bullshit gets lower and lower and the things that we need in life, the essentials go do go up. But overall considering, in my opinion, the amount of billions they have to throw all over the place, they have done a masterful job with inflation. Considering the amount of money they've had to throw at this economy. I mean, Japan alone is just billions and billions just to keep everything propped up. Uh, the inflation, you know, a, a chocolate bar should be $40. Uh, they've done a great job. No, I, I don't, I'm, look, don't please don't interpret that. These people are monsters that run the system. Monsters. I'm just saying an impressive job. Inflation should be much, 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 much worse considering all the stimulus. And, um, you know, I think they, I think um, the reason for that is, I believe it is, like I've said before, like AI, supercomputer managed. They know exactly where to inject the money, how to inject it in the right way. And if you think about it, if it's done right, the inflation aspect shouldn't be that bad. So taking the example of Ford Motor Company that I keep picking on, um, if they had needed that injection of $1.5 billion, see, this month they, uh, they turned the lights on on all the plants, they paid all the employees, and they paid all their vendors. They paid all the car parts. They paid off Tommy Boy running around selling brake parts to Ford Motor Company. He could take a dump in a box, but all he'd have is a guaranteed piece of shit. Tommy Boy, that's a funny movie. Um, you know, you know, when I buy brake parts, I want to, I want a little sign on the box that says "guarantee" that makes me feel good. Anyway, sorry. Um, they pay Ford Motor Company pays their employees. They turn the lights on, but then all of a sudden, ooh, a crisis. They made a bad investment or whatever. They don't have any money. So then the Fed just sends them that $1.5 billion. They just pay the same people that they did last month. So, like, from an inflation standpoint, you know, Tommy Boy gets paid, the car parts, the lights go on, but, 
but there's there's an, almost no if inflationary effect because they're just continuing what they did last month by the Fed saving their ass, if that makes any sense. So I think they know how to control the stimulus where you know if there was an inflationary run that could that could domino and implode the system but um back to uh the it is inevitable uh i, I don't know how i'm not even going to say any, any anymore i don't know the level of uh, technology and ai supercomputer that they're using to keep to do the injections they are doing the injections i would bet anything on that um not anything not anything i don't like to make put certain contracts out into the ether I would bet, uh, you know, I'd bet uh, <laughs> $10. Okay, we'll just rescind that, anything. I'd bet $10 that they're injecting a ton of money off books. Okay, off books. How, how long can they keep it up? Um, you know, again, I'm not even going to say anymore because they'll probably do it longer than we, we can ever expect them to do. But it's inevitable. It cannot go on and on and on forever. Um, you know, they're they're almost at this point, like they're doing in Japan, they have to create the debt to to create the new dollars, but then it's almost like they have to fake create the demand as well, because you and I, regular people, can only buy so much. So are they creating the debt and the demand and supply artificially at the same time? Who knows? It doesn't matter. Point is it can't go on forever, and that's what this Bitcoin cryptocurrency it this is where you'll get a lot of people that will very vehemently and violently disagree with my take on this and um you know i don't no i don't trust uh bitcoin if you've made a lot of money in bitcoin that's wonderful that's great i, I don't know what's going on recently in bitcoin i don't follow SGT report in these shows that just talk about financial collapse and shenanigans all the time i once i saw the shenanigans Years and years ago, well, what's you know, it's all being artificially stimulated. Why would I want to? Who cares? This the reason I'm making this is just so uh, a portion of of new people here understand the basis of the system, which they might not understand. So, I believe I don't believe Bitcoin just popped up and blockchain. I believe it's all the system itself created it as a test case. You know, people think Bitcoin is. Oh, you're just rejecting the system and the the feds uh, hate it and uh, give me a break. If if on paper if everybody went to a cryptocurrency, then that by definition is a clear and present danger to the monetary system itself. Could implode the monetary system if everybody flocked to Bitcoin quote end quote overnight. They could shut it down in an hour. Oh, they're, no, they're, we have freedom here, Matt. They couldn't intervene. Really? Come on. Give me a break. They could, they could say, they could, there could be, a, here's what would happen. I mean, people have no clue. Um, the Treasury Secretary would take to a podium. First of all, they'd create a crisis. They'd cook up some bullshit crisis, which would be fake. The Treasury Secretary would come to a podium and say, um, cryptocurrency is now a clear and present danger to the sovereignty of the United States because it affects the world reserve currency of the United States dollar. We must, we will, we will, we have to shut down cryptocurrencies. The NSA is looking to do that now. They wouldn't be able to do that. They wouldn't be able to get into the systems. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they would. Okay. They would shut the cryptos down. Anybody that holds cryptos will pay you 50 cents on the dollar in coins, quarter, quarter. They could shut it down in an hour cook up some crisis. They created it, in my opinion. Isn't it obvious, though, when you really look closely at it? It was just some guy nobody knows about. And who? Where's, where's the Bitcoin creator? How come he's not on Oprah every day? How come? It's like the guy that created that video that uh, spawned whatever happened in Benghazi in Libya. The guy created a video, and then he just disappeared. And then he, we heard he was in jail in California. But nobody's cared to interview him. No, where is the people that created Bitcoin? Where's the little Bitcoin? Matt, there is no centralization. Come on, they created it. Okay, the people that got involved with it early on were smart enough to, or, or you know, blind squirreled enough to get involved with it. And many people made hundreds and hundreds and millions of dollars. So that's great. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. But, 
you know, come on. The, the, the crypt, Bitcoin's a test case because eventually, whenever the system is just out of hand, implodes, or the inflationary effect goes run away, uh, if, you, if you stimulate everything long enough, eventually a candy bar will be 30 bucks and, you know, 40 million little old grandmothers will be like, I can't even put a can of Alpo on the table. Um, and they'll have to do something, okay? They'll have to do something. Now, they don't want 30 million hungry people taking the streets with pitchforks and, you know, at some point, they do have to do something for the people because they don't want the people to wake up you have to be just comfortable enough to stay asleep. We know that. They will move to crypto. Almost all hard cash and coins will be gone forever. Uh, there'll be a few instances where maybe people could use them uh, at certain government uh, offices, like homeless people or something. I, you know, everybody, it'll go digital, 100% digital. And the Bitcoin and the other cryptos will basically be a test case. Some of those other cryptos maybe are completely legitimate. But they don't, you know, whatever. They, why would they care? The Bitcoin was likely a test case for what they will move everybody to. And they'll say, if you have 100,000 old U.S. paper dollars in your account, uh, they'll shut everything down. And as of uh, tomorrow morning, you'll have, uh, I don't know, 8,000 uh, Uncle Sam co Bitcoins. Uncle Samsonites. I, I don't know what they'll call it. But, you know, but that's what they'll do. And you'll wake up and you'll have a, a, a miraculously all the banks will have their systems kind of ready to go and just about a week or, or so every major bank will have a you know they'll just be ready to deal with it and ready to move over like well they know it's coming so they're probably doing it now or have done it so that's what's going to happen i just the main point of this section is people that think bitcoin just came out of the blue and the the government just is just shaking in their boots afraid of it oh, come on me a break <sighs> all right is there anything else i made a little tiny list here so the debt can never be paid back so well when, when any politician um that comes out and says you know the the conservatives for example will constantly talk about the national debt i don't even think they do it anymore because they're starting to even understand what it is but they'll say we we need to tighten our fiscal belt, or be, we need to think of our grandchildren's generation, or our children's generation, and stop living so high on the hog ourselves. Uh, almost none of those people, in my opinion, understand. The politicians themselves don't have a clue. They don't understand that the debt can never be paid back, or the system, the Ponzi scheme, would implode upon itself. No different than if. Bernie Madoff had a thousand clients and all thousand, you know, called for the money at the same time. In fact, well, with a Ponzi scheme like that, you could you could have, out of a thousand clients, you could probably have 20 calling for their money. But even if just 200 called for their money, the whole thing would implode. And that is the the whole financial system that we live under. You know, when Rick Perry, anybody running for office at that level is a complete puppet, um would be a, just a mouthpiece for the system and um, but we remember what he said I don't think he was looking out for us when he said it but it was just something I'm, I'm, I'm recalling now when he took to the to, during the debate I mean Rick Perry wasn't the brightest of guys it's almost like the script of the script of the governor of Texas um, well I guess the, I don't know much about the current governor. He seems to be a tad bit smarter than the prior two dummies. I was going to say the script of the governor of Texas, you have to be an absolute moron. But um, maybe they broke the script with a new one. But whatever that guy in Texas now, he's... I hope nobody thinks he's... He's just a puppet of the system, of course. That's been proven over and over again. That's been proven in the the fake, uh, you know, bang-bang events. Um... So, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, he came out, Perry came out and said that Social Security is a Ponzi scheme. And then he was totally trashed for saying that. Social Security, by every possible definition, is the most perfect definition of a Ponzi scheme that has ever existed in the history of humankind. What Perry said was the most accurate thing anyone's ever said. And he was, you know, remember he was trashed by it. And you know what I would say, I mean... I'm not sure anything's natural. Almost like he he said it. He was there to fulfill that role. I, I don't. 
uh, people then people then he got trashed for saying it he got removed for or taken out of the running for the presidency and the message to people is well he said it's a ponzi scheme he got completely trashed so the subconscious message to, message to people might be it's not a ponzi scheme maybe that was the purpose of the whole event but i'm being too conspiratorial the point is he was 100% accurate but he didn't go far enough um, the whole monetary system is a Ponzi scheme. Social Security is just one uh, brick in this gigantic wall of the monetary system. Of course, Social Security is. As soon as a worker at Joe's Auto Parts or GE or whatever, their paycheck comes, the, the FICA percentage, whatever, uh, $180 goes off to the feds, the moment they get it, the moment they get it, they take it and give it to a retiree. It's the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time. There's no accounts building up or there's no your money. They just get it. It's like Bernie Madoff getting a new client. And the moment he gets the new client in the $10,000, well, the million dollar deposit check, there's a client at exactly the same time calling for his million dollars. And he just signs it over. And he, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. That's Toast Security. But the whole system is that now is the Ponzi scheme of new debt just trying to keep up with new demand and the, the new track being laid in front of the runaway train. Um, so when politicians say tighten belts, I mean, they literally don't understand. They have no idea that the... the uh, and this isn't, this isn't some conspiracy. Or, this is 100%. They cannot pay any debt back. It has to grow. If they say how wonderful things are, install it for a few quarters, then that's all cooked up. and That's not real anyway. Like the, um, the unemployment percentage. I mean, it's... You can... You can manipulate... If you have enough numbers and st statistics flying around, I could show you a, a spreadsheet that shows uh, basically that every single cashier at McDonald's is actually Santa Claus. I, you can manipulate... Any set of statistics, any way you want, if you're, you know, crafty enough. And that, and I mean, it's so pathetic the way they do it. If you, um, say, if they say that you're actually, I'm gonna, I'm talking about the unemployment percentage. I mean, it's a complete joke. What, I don't even know what they say it is, but I hear it's all, it's we're at all time lows or close to full employment, right around five percent, or I don't even know, but it's got to be right around there because we hear so many wonderful things about the unemployment percentage, but. The thing is, if, if 20 million people, 20 million Americans say, uh, I'm, I've looked for a job for a year and a half and I can't find anything and I have some savings and I'm not ready to go work at the Dairy Queen, I'm just going to take three months off, go figure out life, use up some retirement savings. They'll then say that that 20 million people are out of the workforce. <laughs> They're no longer looking for a job. They're the most beaten down. They can't find anything. They're they're you know half uh, one tenth of that twenty million are ready to take their own lives with suicide. They want a job so bad they can't find it, but they're out of the workforce. So when you take people out of the workforce, that lowers the unemployment. It gets better because they're not they're no longer counted as even looking. Where any of those twenty million, if you knock on their door and say, "I've got a job down the street with an office and a nice computer and a printer, and um, it's a little bit of sales, a little bit of account management, of sixty-five thousand a year," they say, "Yeah, I'll take it." But no, they're out of the workforce, so unemployment then goes down to four point five. Or come on, it, it, and beyond the, the 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 ways they tell you they manipulate it, there's fifty ways they can do it behind the scenes. In terms of who, what do they count as full-time? If you have a person that works three jobs, well, they'll count three jobs, even though they're working in the morning at Taco Bell and they're working it in the evening uh, stocking lumber. But, oh, they have, that's two separate jobs, even though it's only for one person, so they can put food on the table. It's a joke. The real employment, unemployment percentage, based on the job people are qualified for or have worked or want to work in. You know, again, somebody age 35 that's been... Uh, uh, say they've they've been in sold auto insurance or they they were insurance license or something I know about they uh, you know that well they should be able to work in that industry even if they have to move to another state you know that should count as unemployment the fact that they could go across the street and you know help the burgers get flipped at Dairy Queen between eleven and one that shouldn't really matter but that's the way they count it 
the real unemployment percentage, again, if, if for, for jobs people want to get or qualified to get and should be able to get, is around, is 15%, in my opinion. And that doesn't include retirees, literally people out of the workforce. 15% um, on 340 million people. Uh, that's a lot of people. Um, that's, the, it's not, that's the real unemployment percentage, in my opinion. No, oh, did I do any statistics? No, I pulled out of my butt, but I, I I believe that's accurate. If they calculated it, you could even say the way they used to probably calculate it in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, it would be that. They just changed the way they calculate it. And uh, the, if they change the way they calculate it one more time, it will show Santa Claus is the cashier at every single McDonald's. Um, is there anything else I missed? So... Yeah, I'm these these Rob Kirby's of the world and uh, all these other people that appear on SGT Report. I don't even you know tell me in the comments are these people still popping up? Saying, what are they saying? I mean, how many times can you talk about the boy that cried wolf? Um, are they still saying we're a few weeks away from from uh, meltdown? Or what are they talking about? Did all these channels just shift off to other topics, pretending like they never talked about that? Um, I always had a problem with SGT Report for that reason. It would be Bill Holter. That was his name. Bill Holter would come on um, SGT Report, and he'd say, like, if Brexit goes through, um, or this happens, we're like a week away from implosion. Then it would happen or not happen, but a lot of it happened, like Brexit, and like a month later, here comes Bill Holter would come back on, and Sean of the SGB report wouldn't even couldn't even how's the economic collapse doing today? Wouldn't even say, wait a second, you said this, you need to address this. Never happened, like it was never said. Let's just go on talking about the economic collapse that's coming. So that's why the, I was like, what? If somebody says something like that, you got to call them on it. <laughs> what? I might say a few things. I I probably called. It should have happened by now. But I'm not in the financial business. I'm not trying to sell you gold. All these guys are like, they're dealing and they're in that business. And they have a profit motive. Whatever. All right. This has been long enough. Thanks for listening, guys.